All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another Cake and Conversation at the Paul Pratt Library. I'm Kristen, one of the librarians. And this month, I have my special guest, Robin Chan, who I think is somebody probably familiar to everyone, especially if you have kids who play sports or if you go to town meeting or any town activity. Robin is always there. Welcome, Robin, and thanks for coming. Thank you for having me, Christine. Now, I have a question for you. How long have you been working as a photojournalist? I should say what you do, in case people don't know. Robin is a photojournalist, and he's with the Mariner Newspapers, Wicked Local. How long have you been working for them? It seems to me forever. <laughs> yeah, it's been quite a while. Uh, so I've been working for the Mariner uh, full time since uh, 2005. So that's 16 years now. And uh, I've also uh, was freelancing with them before uh, working for them full time uh, starting in 2001. Okay, all right. So sort of when my kids were born in the late 90s. So for every event I took them to, you were there. So that's good. <laughs> yeah. And, but you don't only do, um, you know, wicked local stuff. Talk about your background pictures here. These aren't just, you know, Zoom <laughs> back screen images. These are all your pictures you've got, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, I got into uh, photography uh, because I've been able to go to a lot of amazing places uh, with my family. And I was like the family photographer. And, um, you know, I just wanted to continue uh, doing something that I love with my job. And um, so I still continue taking pictures on my vacations. And this is from a trip that I took to uh, Copenhagen, um, visiting uh, some teammates of mine and, and also uh, just exploring Europe while I was out there. How old were you when you started photography? Oh, yeah. So uh, I was quite young, actually. So um, like I said, I started when I was uh, going on family vacations. I was a family photographer and uh, we would hit a lot of national parks uh, uh, during my uh, youth. And um, it's very easy to get inspired by the natural beauty out there. Um, so um, I would venture to say probably when I was like nine, 10, 11 years old, kind of in that time frame, um, I was using a point and shoot camera. Um, it was all filmed back in the day. I'm a lot yep. older than a lot of people think I am. So, <laughs> um, so I started with, uh, you know, film and um, just remembered the excitement about getting the uh, pictures back from the, the shop and you know, going through them, um, you know. But then, the like, you'd get so many duds, too, that, you you know, you had to pay for. It's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah, or blanks, yeah. or, you know, your picture of your thumb, whatever, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, you know, it, it, there's something to be said about having the prints and, um, you know, getting them back and, you know, reliving your vacation that way a few months afterwards rather than, you know, just having the immediate uh, um, gratification of digital photography, you know, That's so. Good. Did your parents give you like lenses for your birthdays and fancy cameras? Uh, later on they did, you know, um, you know, one of my uh, gifts was like an early uh, digital camera. Um, so that was, you know, pretty useful to like get acclimated to. Um, before it kind of become mainstream. Yeah, what do you use now? Uh, so for work, I use uh, Canon gear um, and the company provides me with uh, two professional bodies so that I use that. Mm. Um, you know, I use a, a wide array of, of uh, lenses. So um, I mostly use the 70 to 200 F2.8 and the 16 to 35 F2.8. Uh, because of the uh, extra uh, f-stop so that mm -hmm. allows me to um, you know capture images and low light situations and, and things like that so uh, and uh, you know, there's also some specialty lenses I, I like to use to play with uh, to kind of 
expand my creative outlet. So uh, the 100 f2.8 uh, macro lens is a really fun lens to use. Um, so with a macro lens, you can get really up close detailed shots of, of things. And uh, that's another way to kind of tell the story uh, through details. Um, so with, with uh, you know, my work, I try to get a variety of looks, you know, so you can get a wide angle shot to get a sense of, you know, what's going on. And then, you know, you get close ups and detail shots. And uh, so there's uh, many different ways to tell the story. And, and so that the, the viewer or reader won't, you know, get bored by the same similar type of um, photo. Do, when you travel, do you pack camera gear or do you just? I guess it depends on what I'm looking to do. Um, so if there's a specific goal in mind and I do bring the specific lenses I would need to bring. Uh, for instance, this past uh, summer, I went to Seattle to visit family out there and I planned it to uh, try to photograph the Milky Way. Mm. And um, there is a, um, you know, it's better to use uh, wider angle lenses to capture the sky. And so I brought my fisheye, 16 millimeter, 2.8 fisheye to, to capture the Milky Way over Mount Rainier. And so uh, luckily we were able to get uh, clear skies that night. And uh, an extra bonus was the uh, Persades uh, meteor, meteor shower was happening uh, around that time too. So every now and then, meteorites were streaking across the sky and um, it, it was quite a sight. It was uh, very impressive. Do you have those pictures on your website or do you just keep them uh, to yourself? Uh, so I, I post them uh, on like Instagram. Uh, I could be better at updating my, my website. I do have a website. It's uh, Yeah, let uh, me go. I think I have it here. Hang on. Let's see. Oh, yep. There you go. Can you see it? Yep. It's what is it? Robin Chan. Zenfolio.com. Yeah. So I actually have two websites, which is kind of uh, confusing, oh, but but this one is also very good because uh, you can actually I keep all my sports gallery. So you mentioned I um, shoot a lot of high school sports for the papers, and uh, so if uh, you have a kid that uh, you know played sports for one of the local teams in the South Shore, I would update my website and, and upload all the sports photos throughout the years. So um, I only recently started doing that, but uh, you know, if you have a kid that um, played sports and you're looking for a gift for Christmas. Uh, you know, because you definitely... it's fun, because my son used to play high school baseball. So I thought, oh, there he is. Yeah, so it was fun. Yeah, 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 I'm glad that you that you hang on to them too. How far yeah. back does it go? He was 2016. He graduated. Uh, so I, I definitely have it somewhere. Probably. Um, I just recently started uploading since I got this uh, particular website to uh, upload all the galleries. So mm -hmm. um, potentially I might have 2016 already up there, but. I definitely have all the photos in, in external hard drives. It just might be a little bit more challenging to find if uh, you know they're not already up there. Because you used to do, or you still do, little league games too, occasionally, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So for parents, like the uh, the little league parade, and you know, yep. especially if they, you know, go far in the in the uh, tournament, in the uh, you know the Williamsport. Uh, William is it Williamsport? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Williamsburg, I forget. Williamsport, so, yep. Williamsport, yep. Uh, you know, literally tournament. So uh, I know this past uh, summer I was uh, following the Hingham uh, Little League team and they, they went advanced fairly far in, in the tournament. So. so how do you decide what to shoot? Like on any given spring or summer weekend, yeah. there's got to be tons of kid activities that or, or fall. Uh, you know, or town activities, not only here, but Hingham and other neighboring towns. How do you whittle it down, what to go to and, and photograph? Yeah, so uh, there are definitely times where the, the editor will ask me, we want uh, these types of photos uh, covering this event um, mm -hmm. at this time. And so, you know, certainly 
when an editor asks for that, um, I go um, and cover as best, best I can because, you know, um, sometimes it's, it's challenging to cover everything um, because they may fall in roughly around the same time and mm -hmm. distance wise, it's hard to hit both because one event is at, you know, Marshfield and the other is in Weymouth and, or, you know, maybe in Citroën and, and things like that. And so, uh, and it, it also is challenging in um, certain time periods, like uh, high school graduation, where right. you know, there, there's a lot of graduations happening at the same time or, or things like that. And then that's when we coordinate with the Patriot Ledger and try to hit as much towns as we can with all the different resources that we have, um, so. But there's also times where I, search out for things myself yeah. and, and try to, um, you know, capture as much as I can um, to kind of, um, you know, you know, show off the, the community. Uh, definitely, I try to uh, get coverage in all the different towns I, I um, you know, have, uh, I work for. So um, if there's already, a lot of things I shot for Hingham or Citroën, then I might um, go more towards Hanover or Noel um, if, if uh, I'm just going around looking for photos. Yeah. Do you have a police scanner? Uh, I do not. Well, I do, but I don't use it. Uh, I do have uh, notifications on Twitter. Oh. Uh, so it does let me know if there is um, something major going on. Um, and, and, uh, so I can go and, and cover a fire if, um, uh, it's close and, 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 um, you know, if it's a timely event, I guess, um, yeah. sometimes it's hard when, you know, my coverage is so big, I, I, I do yeah. get notifications sometimes I'm like, uh, well, it's kind of far away by the time I get there and there. It's pretty much done. It might be and, out. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, also the uh, the enterprise uh, might be covering it. So then, oh. you know, um, yeah. So it's kind of a, but I do, um, I, I have been uh, more attentive in trying to cover um, fires and, and things like that, because that's an important thing, because it shows, you know, the uh, resources that the town is, putting yeah. into the, the in firefighting is really important and, and yep. you know and also the bravery and courage of the local firefighters i have i love the wicked local police scanner but i recently saw that they're going to discontinue it oh wow or, or maybe it will be a paid you know subscription mm -hmm. so because i i just think it's amazing how many calls they go on in a, you know, any given day, all, yeah. all over the place for, you know, for different types of calls. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, do you develop your film or you probably know how to, but I imagine. So I'm, I, I don't use uh, film as much anymore. Oh, that's uh, right. Yeah. It's, 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 I wasn't thinking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's 99% digital. Uh, sometimes if I'm, you know, on vacation, I, you know, may want to get the film look, but it's, it's kind of, uh, it's, it's more convenient to have the digital. And um, so I, I tend to mostly shoot the dig digital. Yeah. That makes um, sense. Yeah. Yeah. And like, also like, I do so. bring a mirrorless a digital camera. Uh, now mirrorless is definitely kind of the new trend in, in photography. What does so, that mean? Mirrorless? Uh, so the shutter can be um, like, so in a conventional film or digital camera, there's a mirror that uh, reflects from the, the viewfinder or the, the eye cup. So it goes through the lens and then up and then into the, in the viewfinder mm -hmm. or the, um, the, the cup. And with mirrorless, you don't need that. So you can have a live view on a digital uh, back and you can look at things. Uh, at least I'm pretty sure that's how it how it works. So <laughs> interesting. I'm gonna have to look that up. Yeah. So um, what's what's great about mirrorless? They're 
very silent. And so you can uh, really be able, you're, you're able to use the camera um, very um, kind of uh, quietly so that you don't disturb pretty uh, emotional events potentially. Mm -hmm. So whether it's like a funeral or a vigil, um, I'm always, I'm very mindful of the sound of the, uh, the shutter when I'm taking That's pictures nice, yeah. at, at those types of events. So, um, but with a mirrorless, uh, it's less of an issue. And so yeah. you can continue working without disturbing the kind of, um, you know, somber moment. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. But Did it's also lighter and easier to deal with. So um, it's definitely more fun to use on, on vacation. Are they small, like compact? Oh, they can be really small. Like a yeah. cell phone? Uh, I mean, you, you know, even cell phones are big now. So, like, yeah, true. Uh, yeah. The the, uh, the mirrorless is probably like the size, but thicker. You know, it definitely has more depth to to mm -hmm. a um, mobile phone. But um, they they kind of look like the old school viewfinders. Um, oh, from, okay. Yep. Yeah. At least the one I have. Um, but there are definitely um, more professional versions that Canon and Nikon are coming out now that uh, are, have a smaller footprint than your conventional professional camera, but still bigger than a point and shoot camera. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Are you from the area? You yeah. I, yes. I, I grew up in Hanover. Oh, you did. So you I mean, know the area. Yeah. Very well. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So. That's um so that that's very helpful then um, yeah you know you know all the back roads and back ways and stuff yeah, yeah. And, and traditional events and things like that and you know what's important in the south shore and stuff like that so yeah so what is your favorite event or thing to shoot uh that's a that's a loaded question am i might get i know <laughs> of course it is um uh, let's see um so many different things i mean um i can't pick just one i mean you know one thing that stands out is um i think one of the coolest traditions is the uh, green harbor beach games uh during labor day weekend so they have like um races uh, uh egg tosses um three-legged races and uh, it ranges from really young kids like you know three or four years old uh, up to adults for some of the uh, three-legged races and those are very funny to, That's uh, funny. to photograph yeah. and so you find you know these families that go to uh, Green Harbor every year and they compete every single year and this goes back years and, and it's really uh, interesting and fun kind of uh, tradition. That, that uh, does sound like a fun tradition. I wish we did something like that here. <laughs> that it would be very competitive though. <laughs> oh, it's definitely competitive. And that's what makes it so fun. I mean, you have adults like leaping across the finish line to be first and dragging their you know partner because the other partner fell and they, you know, it's just so oh. hilarious. Oh, that sounds great. That sounds yeah. neat. And I also saw on your website, you have beautiful fine art photography, like beautiful, bold colors and, and just gorgeous work too. So you, you do all kinds of stuff, travel, sports, and fine art. So I do encourage people to take a look at your website. And if they want to order pictures, definitely do that. It does yeah. go quite a ways back. Um, so that's a really good, good feature that you offer. Yeah. And, and you can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Um, uh, uh, Instagram is our chan photo and then, okay. uh, Twitter is our chan underscore, uh, I think Mariner photo, I believe I should know this off my head, but, uh, um, I think if we just Google, um, Robin Chan photographer photography, we kind of get it all. Yeah. That's how I found your website. Yeah. yeah. So you're so. you are you are out there. You've got a presence. <laughs> That's good. That's hey, good well, to hear. thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. 
No problem. Do you, you want to quickly go through the, um, the car hazard photos that you're? Yes. So show me um, what you got. Let me uh, share my screen. Did you do the costume parade the other day on Sunday, Saturday, Sunday on the common? Uh, no, unfortunately not. Yeah, I forgot about it. I like to go. It's one of those things I like to go look at. Oh, look at all this. Yeah, so I kind of uh, put together photos from the past year and a half. Of oh, yeah, of, let's take a look. Some of them are basically more documenting the uh, pandemic. And that, yeah. that was one thing that I really kind of uh, knew that this was kind of a historic moment and really wanted to uh, do my best to document that. And so uh, these are all car hazard photos from the past year and a half. Yeah, that must have been hard for you. Wow, look at that. <laughs> so these are uh, college kids that were meeting at up. At the in beach, the right? Yeah, yeah socially I, I distant. Uh, Getting the boat winter ready or like spring ready, I forget. <laughs> One or the other. Yes, right. And then, you know, all these creative ways to hold town, town meetings. Meeting. Um, you know, that, that's such a unique thing. Yeah. And then uh, with this photo, I, I really enjoyed the, the light on and, and the boy's face mm -hmm. and the eyes. Um, you know. Oh, voting, yeah. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, so I got into astrophotography fairly recently, but probably the past two or three years. Wow. So this is like a quick storm that came through. And what's funny is that this photo was taken about 10 minutes later from the, oh, uh, the previous photo. Wow, gorgeous. Socially distant 9-11 uh, ceremony. Oh, look at that. You know, schools adjusting to, you know, socially distant uh, eating. And oh, that's so funny. Oh, that's so clever. So, oh, know, arts, arts festival. Yeah. Wow, look at that. <laughs> I'll be taking more noise to storms later today. Yeah, I think, I think you will. <laughs> yep. So one of the cool things about my job is that I get to explore different things, you know, uh, you know, like, for instance, like a movie filming. Yes, oh, John Hamm. Yeah. Um, you know, all these different sports. These are great. And just back to coming together again, but still, yeah. Wow, that's great. Oh. The intensity. And then this is a uh, photo I took at, at the Milky Way Mount Rainier. That's amazing. I, I can bring it up again and just yeah. have it there for a second. Oh, that's so stunning. Do you know how long it's been since I've seen the Milky Way? That's I'm sure, gorgeous. quite a while. God, that's gorgeous. Two full frame. And so you see that there's streaks. Uh, Look, yep, there they that's are. That's from the meteor uh, shower. And so that's, that just, boy, that makes you pause and think, right? Yeah. That puts everything in perspective. Yeah, it, it, it's really stunning. And um, um, I was glad I was able to uh, capture it and witness it firsthand and, um, like I said, the, the meteor show was kind of a bonus for me. I didn't realize what was happening that night. And it was kind of like natural fireworks. Whenever yeah. one would streak by, everyone will you know, in shock and awe of, of what just happened. Yeah. Oh, and um, look at down there. Is that the Big Dipper kind of bottom left next to the, the one meter? All the like oh, candy cane. Yeah. I, I I don't think so, oh. uh, but it does kind of look like, like a dipper. Or is it uh with a scorpion tail or something? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm 
pretty bad at, at those constellations. Uh, I'm sure too. someone will will comment or whatever, but uh, you know, it, it was a, a really amazing. That is able amazing. To capture this. Um, so this is actually two photos uh, on top of one another. Uh, be because it's at night, you can't get detail in the foreground. Yeah. And so huh. one photo is just to get the foreground. And then the other photo is to get the, the night sky. And oh, so you layer it on top of each other in Photoshop. And then uh, wow. you blend them together to get this, this image. That's just stunning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank oh, you. you just could stare at that all day. <laughs> I, I I did. Ideally, it would have been over the Mount Rainier, so you you would have the Milky Way over on the right uh, mm -hmm. above Mount Rainier. Um, but by the time that happened, the uh, one thing was the galaxy center would be below the horizon. So um, it's you know the the okay. Earth is rotating, yeah. and so that um, so you see the galaxy center is right above the the range. It's, it's yeah. a different color. And so by the, the, the time that the Milky Way would shift over to Rainier, Mount Rainier, uh, the galaxy center would be behind the peak. Yeah. And so. Uh, yeah. Oh, this is just spectacular. Wow. What month was this? Uh, it was in August. And, August. Um, it was actually during all the wildfires. Huh. Um, and really? there was some yeah danger about... Um, well, not danger, more like would the smoke obscure the sky? Yeah. So, like I said, luckily we were able to get clear uh, uh, skies that night. Though we did see uh, fires in the in the distance um, to kind of our left mm -hmm. viewing of this. If you're looking at Rainier in front of you, there were distant fires in the left, and it, it was just an eerie red glow at night that you would see. Um, so that yeah. was kind of um, sobering, I guess. Um, yep, but, yep, sure is. Oh, but, you uh, really lucked out, though, with the clear night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, with, with the modern technology, you have all these apps you sit to kind of show you if you have clear skies and kind of plan how to capture this. Um, Photo Pills is a great app uh, if you're looking to take pictures of either uh, the Milky Way or you know the moon, the moon rising. You know, I, I definitely use that app to. What's it called again? Photo Pills. Uh, photo. P -H, uh, photo oh. then Pills. P I L. I think okay. one L could be could be two Ls, but um, it's a great app. You have to buy it. Um, but I think it's only like fifteen dollars or something like that. And it's well yeah. worth it because yeah. you can really um, plan your Milky Way photos, your your moon photos, your sunset photos, sunrise photos, because um, it kind of tracks the, the different um, elements for you, and you can pre-visualize what where the Milky Way would be because hmm. um, there's a virtual uh, setting that you can check out. So it's really a useful tool. Wow. Well, thank you. No That's problem. just wonderful. We're going to end on that note. <laughs> really great. So that has well, to be your favorite picture, I would think. For this past year, yeah, yeah for sure. This is gorgeous. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the, uh, the, the raindrop photo is uh, something I'm also pretty proud of. Yeah. Um, I, I, I must admit, I, I saw um, Boston Globe photographer John Tomecki uh, do this type of thing. And mm -hmm. so I wanted to try to emulate that and, and I was able to uh, do it uh, successfully. So. And that was up at Government Island, right? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Yep. And what, so was, what were the raindrops on? Uh, they were on my, uh, my car window. So really? yeah, yeah. Um, so I use, like you remember, I mentioned a macro lens. Yeah. Uh, so I use the macro lens for that. So I can print, pull it up again. So we can. That's just amazing. Let me just do it uh, bigger. Like, would you drive across a lawn to get? <laughs> <you do> that? <laughs> no, I, I was still on the uh, 
<laughs> in the roadway from there. That's so, just the coolest thing. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, I like that uh, long one, that long skinny one in the bottom. In the bottom, yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, actually, I think technically these were all upside down, but I just rever uh, um, oh, yeah. reversed it in, in Photoshop to make it more sensi sensible. That would be a cool greeting card or something. Yeah. 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 All, well, all your pictures would be. <laughs> Thank you. Actually, one of the things I like to do is uh, make my own personal Christmas cards every year yeah. and send them to friends and family. So I try to find, um, you know, one winter scene that that could work. Um, usually it's kind of nature -y, but sometimes I do include ones with people that either are funny or, or, or not, you know, so um it is kind of like a cool challenge to have each year to try to yeah. like i need to find my next year's uh, christmas card you know, exactly so. yep and probably sometimes you find them in january or february and just hang yeah. on to them yeah yep yeah, yep yeah, yeah, yeah. so i have one in mind um but I'll, I'll look over them again just to uh see which one would work best so oh, this one's great yeah all right. Well, I'm going to thank you. This was wonderful. Thank you so much. You haven't had an exhibit here yet, have you? No, I haven't. No. Oh, all right. We've got to, <laughs> got to figure that out. Yeah. I think that would be great. All right. All right. Are, are they able to have like openings again because of the pandemic? We do. Um, they're, you know, the artists have tried to keep them pretty small, um, yeah. you know, which kind of, it's difficult. Everybody masked up, of course, when you're in the building. So they're not, they're not as fun as they once were. <laughs> and the town is very firm too about no alcohol. Okay. We used to have, you know, wine, beer. It was yeah. a social event, but yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're quieter now. But so this would be a great way for people to see your work. Yeah. So see what I can figure out. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me, Kristen. Uh, I'm sorry I got your name right at the beginning. <laughs> oh, I answered everything. All right. I'm going to try to end this, but it's always a lot of fumbling on my part, trying to okay. um, figure out how to end the meeting. Yes, indeed. So, but thank you again. And I'll see you around. Yes, I will. Well, right. Take care and take care. try to stay dry. Dry, dry than too. me. <laughs> Bye. Bye.